Hi there, this is Math 8, Unit 4, Lesson 6, called Strategic Solving. We're going to be solving linear equations today, so let's take a look at the first activity in class today, called Equal Perimeters. It says the triangle and the square have equal perimeters. Find the value of x, and then find the perimeter of each of the figures. So to do this here, I'm going to first of all take a look at the triangle, which has a perimeter of 2x plus another 2x plus x minus 8. So that's going to be the sum of all three sides. That then is going to be equal to the perimeter of the square. They only gave us one side of the square, which is x plus 2, but we know that a square has four equal sides, so we could put four on the outside, and then we can, can proceed to distribute that like so. So we can go ahead and combine these terms here. We have a 2 and a 2 and a 1 for a 5x on this side, minus 8, is going to be equal to 4 times x, which is 4x, plus 4 times 2, which is 8 there. Now we can go ahead and we can subtract a 4x from here and a 4x from there. So we're left with x on this side being equal to, let's add 8 here and add 8 there, being equal to 16. So our value of x is going to be equal to 16, which solves the first question. But then to find the perimeter of each figure, I need to take that x value and put it back into one of my uh, equal, uh, expressions. So for the square, for example, it was 4 times x plus 2. And so if x was equal to 16, we replace the x with 16 and put it there. So 16 plus 2 is 18. And we're going to multiply that by 4. And 4 times 18 is going to be 72. So the perimeter of each shape would be 72. And x value is going to be 16 right there. When you look at activity number two in today's lesson, it says it's one of you predict some solutions without solving to identify whether these equations have a solution that is positive, negative, or zero. So we're trying to decide if it's going to be positive or negative or zero. When you look at the first one, what you notice is that I have an x value on both sides of the equal sign there, meaning that if I multiply this side by four and that side by six, I'm going to end up with x on both sides, something along the lines of x equals an x value there. So the x, because there's a number in front of it, because x can equal some number, x needs to be a value of zero in order for this to be true. Over here, I'm dealing with two positive numbers, and so when I, if I was to divide this, I'd end up with x being equal to a positive number right there. And same is true here, even though I have a different decimal, 32.5 instead of 3.25, when I divide, I end up still with a positive number there. For number four, these 11s are going to cancel each other out because I would subtract and end up with 3x being equal to 0. So again, x is going to be equal to 0 in this case. Over here, if I was to put the 4 over there, thinking about that being a 4x over there, and put this 4 over there, then 4x is going to be equal to 5, and that's going to be a positive solution there for number 5. For number 6, I have a 5x and I'm going to have a negative value on this side. Even when I put the 8 over there, I still have a negative value. So when I divide, a positive divided by negative, I'm going to end up with a negative solution. And the same is true for this one as well. Even though I distribute this out here, I end up with a negative, but I end up with a positive uh, value. And so when I do a negative divided by a positive, I have a negative in this case there. Okay, so you can work them out and, and get that figured out, but the idea is just to be able to recognize the different variables you're working with within the expressions to decide it's going to be a positive, negative, or equals uh, zero solution. Let's look at the next activity in lesson 6 3. It says here are a lot of equations. Which would you rather solve? And what I want you to do is said you decide three equations you think could be the least difficult and three that would be the most difficult to solve. And then be prepared to explain your reasoning for why you think one is harder or easier. Okay? And so I went ahead and selected three as the least difficult to solve. And I said, well, I think D, F, and H seem to be pretty easy to solve. D, F, and H. And I thought that because there were no fractions, no decimals, just a little dis distributing and you should be pretty good to go, okay? J looks pretty easy too, okay? J looks probably like the easiest. In terms of the most difficult to solve, I might say something like A, B, and C all look like they require some work. I have some fractions here, some decimals there. <coughs> That's gonna take some effort to get those ones solved more than just the simple ones there. 
So to solve some of these, I want you to pick one of your least and one of your most to solve. So I went ahead and chose letter D. And letter D as an equation is two times the sum of four K plus three minus 13 equals two times the sum of 18 minus K minus 13. So the first thing I wanted to do is distribute the two. So two times four K is eight K. Two times six is plus six. And we put minus 13 there. Distribute here, two times 18 is gonna be 36. And two times minus K is negative two K. And we have a minus 13 that stays right there, okay? So the next thing I wanna do is combine my like terms or gather or collect, what do you wanna, what do you wanna say? So negative 13 and a positive six is gonna be a minus seven altogether. The eight K stays eight K. And a 36 and a minus 13 is gonna get me um, a 23 minus 2K there, okay? So let's add a 2K to both sides, add a 2K. So we have 10K here, and let's add a seven to both sides. And so we have a 30 over there. Divide both sides by 10, so that K equals 30 divided by 10, which is three. So that's a solution for letter D. To solve letter C, one of the ones that was maybe a little more complicated perhaps, let's write that out. We have 10 minus V, this is a letter C by the way, 10 minus V over four equals two times V plus 17. I'm gonna first of all go ahead and multiply both sides by four, by four. So this eliminates that. So I have 10 minus V equals, distribute the four times two, eight times V plus 17. Now we'll distribute the eight out to 10V equals eight V plus eight times 17 is a whole 136. Let's subtract eight V uh, from, well actually let's go the other, yeah, that's fine. Let's subtract eight V. So one V minus eight V is negative nine V. And we're gonna say that's equal to subtracting 10, subtracting 10, 126. Divide both sides by negative nine, so that V equals negative 14. So it wasn't too bad after all, and it's done. And hopefully you picked some that you wanted to do. Now we're gonna move on to the homework, so take a moment to start your homework, and then press play again after you've done it, and see how you did. Let's take a look at the homework. Okay, number one, it says solve each of these equations, explain or show your reasoning. All right, so let's first of all combine some like terms. I have a 2b and a negative 5b on this side. That's a combined negative 3b. I have an eight and a three, so eight and three make an 11. So I can rewrite that like so. And over here, I still have an 8b and a negative 13 and negative 5 make it <laughs> negative 18. So if I was to rewrite that, I have negative 3b plus 11 equals 8b minus 18. I'm gonna go ahead and add 3b to both sides. So I have 11b, and let's get the 18 the other side, add 18 over there, and that equals 29. I divide both sides by 11, so that b equals simply 29 over 11. All right, let's take a look at letter b. We have two x and a, we have a two x and a negative five x. So that's gonna be a total of a negative three x plus seven and eight makes 15 equals, distribute here, that's a 15 plus 18 x minus 12 x. Those x's combined to be a uh, positive six x equals negative three x plus 15, okay? And so if we add three x over here, let's rewrite this one here. We have negative three X plus five equals 15 plus six X. So if I add three X, add a three X, we have a nine X on this side. And if I subtract 15, subtract 15, we have a 10 over here. A negative 10, sorry, negative 10. And so then when I divide both sides, by nine, x is equal to negative 10 over nine. Let's take a second look at that real quick. 
we have the negative 3x, 15, 15, 18x minus 12. That becomes the 6x, good there. And the 15, good there. Oh, here's where you go. Made a little mistake right there, right? So that should be plus 15, plus 15. So 15 minus 15 becomes zero, right? So when I divide zero by nine, then x is equal to zero. All right, sorry about that one there. That's why you double check your work. So there's where I made my little mistake. And we have x equals zero right there. Now let's do letter C finally for our last one here. We have two C minus three equals two times the sum of six minus C plus seven C. So this stays two C minus three. We distribute two times six is 12. Two times negative C is negative two C plus seven C. This stays the same. And over here I have seven minus two, which is a five C plus 12. I can subtract two C from both sides. So I have a three C there and I can subtract 12 from over here. So I have negative 15 divided by three and negative five is gonna equal C and that becomes my answer for letter C. All right, so that's it. We had 29 over 11, we had zero, and we have negative five for our answers. Number two, so solve each equation and check your solution. So same idea once again. So let's go ahead and we're gonna subtract W, subtract W, so we have a negative four W, add four, add four, equals seven, divide by negative four, so that w equals negative seven fourths. Kind of a strange answer, but that is the correct answer. For b, we have three times three minus three x equals two times x plus three minus 30. Let's distribute first of all. So we have nine minus nine x equals, distribute here, two x plus six minus 30. Combine our like terms, nine minus nine x equals 2x minus 24. I'm gonna add 9x over here so that I have 11x. I'm gonna add 24 over here. 24 plus nine is gonna be 33. And I divide both sides by 11. 33 divided by 11 is simply going to be three. So x equals three for letter B. And then finally for C, we have one third z plus four minus six and two thirds there. Let's go ahead and multiply everything by three. To do that, I'm gonna multiply that by three, multiply the negative six by three, and the two thirds by three. So in doing so, I will end up with z plus four minus 18 equals two times five minus z. Now when I distribute here, this is gonna become a 10 and a minus two z. So let's rewrite that over here. We have z plus four minus 18 is gonna be a minus 14. So we have z minus 14 equals 10 minus two z. So if I add two z over here, I end up with three z. And if I add 14 to both sides, three z equals 24. Divide by three, z is gonna be equal to eight. And that becomes the solution for letter C. For number three, Elena said the equation 9x plus 15 equals 3x plus 15 has no solutions because 9x is greater than 3x. Do you agree? All right, well, here's the thing. If we subtract 15 from both sides, then I'm left with 9x equals 3x, okay? Let's just for the sake of argument here, let's subtract 3x from both sides so that now I have six x equals zero. Divide both sides by six, zero divided by six is zero, so x equals zero is actually a solution. So there is a solution, it's just gonna be a zero solution where x equals zero. For number four, the table gives some sample data for two quantities, x and y, that are in a proportional relationship. Complete the table and then write an equation that goes along with it there. Okay, so what I would like to do find is find my k, my constant proportionality. Let's take our y value divided by our x value, 21 divided by 14, and that go, reduces down, three goes in there, 
Our seven goes into three times, and seven goes into two times. So our k value is three over two. So down on this cell, one times three over two would be three halves. So if I multiply 64 by three over two, I'm gonna end up with 96. And to go this way, remember, I multiply by the, by the reciprocal. So 39 times 2 thirds is going to be 26. So that's my table like so. In terms of an equation, we can say that y equals our slope, or our constant proportionality, 3 over 2 x. And because it's a proportional relationship, it tells us it's going to be going through the origin, so we don't have to worry about anything after that. We leave our equation like that one right there. Okay. Now it wants us to graph this relationship. So let's take a look at how we would graph that. Okay. So to graph this one here, what we do need to do is make sure we um, set our grid lines to the right amounts. We're going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Now over here I went out by five because I knew I had to get from zero to 96. And for the x value, I have to go from zero to 64. So I can go by five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and 65 there. Okay, so then looking back at the values that we had, one value I had was 14 and 21. So here's 14 and 21 is somewhere about here. We also had 64 and 96. So that's going to be somewhere about here. 64, 96. We have 26 and 39. 26 and 39, which is somewhere about here. And that's what we had. We know it's proportional, so let's go through the origin. So it should look something like that. And that's what we have going along there. And that becomes our graph for that problem there. And that's it for today. Hope it helps you out. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Cool. It's Kevin. Hello, Kevin. <laughs>